Welcome to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis B. Wolf and Sandy Runner. I am Alexis B. Wolf of the Fiery Sword Global Ministries, and you can reach me at www.thefiery.store.com. I'm Sandy Renner, and you can reach my webpage at sandyrenner.net. And from there, you can get more information about how to find me. And everything's at the end of the video as well. Yes. And we are Better, Better Together. together. All right, so if you have been with us any time at all, the entire 2022 year has been dedicated to the kingdom of God. We are speaking out of my book, Thy Kingdom Come, Kingdom versus Religion, <clears throat> because it is imperative to know what Jesus really brought. Yes. He did not just bring salvation. salvation. He brought the kingdom, and the kingdom is salvation. It is. It's not an isolated thing. There, there's a whole world. Uh, that it, it, salvation in Scots is really the whole thing. And so we are now, we are in part two of chapter 10, because last week we talked about what it is to be, have the position of king. So we are positioned as kings from heaven in the earth to expand God's kingdom in Correct. the earth. Okay, so we covered that. So now we're going to talk about our position. And again, just in case you missed it, this is not about being male or female. This is about who Christ is in us. That's so right. just to cover that. All right. So we are in, what page are we on there, Sandra One D? 102. 102. 103. Um, so we can read, I love it, and this is very common to most people. 1 Peter 2 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And then again, we read them last week, uh, both Revelation 1, 6 and Revelation 5, 6, say he has made us into, I'm sorry, he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. And 5, 6 is very similar. It says, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign in the earth. And so listen, there there is a reason he has positioned us here, and it is to reign on his behalf. That's right. Subduing That's the earth. All right, take it away there, Sam. Can I, can I back up to this scripture in 1 Peter? I just, I love this. Mm -hmm. She just read it. But you are a chosen race. See, I love it. I, I want to make a comment here. There is this so much, uh, and, and there are powers that be that are trying to bring the racial divide even deeper and wider. Uh, because for their own political or money or whatever their reasons are, but they're promoting that. And we all know we have enough of difficulty trying to bring unity among the races. And mm -hmm. I think through the years we've done a much better job. I know we still have work to do, and we need to continue doing that. But I can solve the whole issue right here. Hit it. All of you get born again. Make the kingdom of God your focus. And race ceased to be a problem. That's because correct. we're all a chosen race. Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty awesome? I love it. I and then it, it says a royal priesthood. There might be some priests out there, but what are you royal? And what that means? So we'll talk about that. We are a holy nation. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't like this country anymore. I don't know about Ukraine. I don't know about Russia. I don't know about China. I don't know about again. Everybody get born again, get into the kingdom of God. We are a holy nation. Right. Problem solved. Exactly. Problem solved. Problem solved. We stop looking at people through the eyes of flesh. Church, let me give you a word. Y'all want a prophetic word? Here's your prophetic word. Right on it. Get serious about being born again into the kingdom of God and you stop having so many issues. We, as the church, will quit all our bickering and fighting and clawing at one another, trying to be top-notch, top-build, and we will be one nation, mm. a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. That's what the kingship is about. That's what the priesthood yes. is about. Being for God's own possession that we proclaim His excellence. And that is a powerful thing. And that will chop down that. all the divisions between, forget races, <laughs> denominations. Oh my gosh. It is it is wild. Well, we Ethnic talk, groups. Just one. Just one. Just one body. Out of darkness. 
Oh, I love it. I love it. I was taking a, a pause for a moment because it is such an incredible thing to understand that we are literally sent from heaven. That chosen nation is the nation of heaven. Yes. We are of nations, uh, heaven's nation. And as ambassadors, we, we mentioned every week, we're going to get to ambassadors. So there's a whole chapter on that. Yeah. But we are here to represent God. Again, he is a king of kings. What kings? We are the kings. He is a lord of lords. What lords? We are lords with the Lord lording into the earth and doing that in a humble servitude Absolutely. mindset. Everything has to do with what will this bring? You know, when, when we embark upon these, we talked about arguments and quarrels and dissensions last week a little bit. You know, when we when we embark upon uh, a, we're going to say a religious or even we could say biblical, a biblical dispute with someone, like that lady who said, oh, you know, the, I was in sin because I was a female minister. And I, 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 I didn't argue with her. I gave her a question. Okay, what if? And you can go back you know, to last week's episode and see that. But leaving people with a what if and let them ponder that before them God. Get out with God. We do not need to get into these stupid scraps with one another, these petty arguments where we are tearing each other apart. And I know we say We're that trying we to prove week. our point. They're trying to prove their point. And thus it is in the political arena. Can I go ahead and be a little controversial here? Look, I'm not, I don't care what party you choose. That's, that is your American right, please, okay? But if you're more focused on your political party than you are saying through the power of the kingdom of God, God, what would you want me to promote? How do you want me to promote that? And how do you want me to vote accordingly so I can be a good citizen of this country mm -hmm. but still honor the country I'm really from, which is the kingdom of God? I promise you a lot of the bickering and fighting and uh, differences will begin to right. find their place in the background. We will be a better nation for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, into my little Well, like, it, so my, my point was that, that we, we, we start these petty arguments and, and disputes, whatever. Before you do that, stop and ask yourself, what will this produce? What is really my kingdom goal? And I think so. we're so busy, again, we say it all the time, but we're so busy trying to be right because we're trying to get people to see what we see in the Word yes. of God that we are missing the whole point. Missing. The whole point is to unify. The whole point is to, is to bring righteousness into the earth. Absolutely. That's, so before you embark upon something, well, I don't care what it is, ask yourself, Am I conducting myself as a priest? Is this, and I don't mean Catholic priest or Episcopalian priest. No. I'm talking about the priest who lives in you. Jesus Christ is the priest. He is eternal. And he came and he, he stood in between and, and he um, went to the Father on our behalf. There's so many things. And, there, and I've got all the scriptures, believe me. They're all right. in my book on this subject. They are. Please get the book, uh, Understanding Kingdom Prayer, if you, want, if you want to know more about this. So we, I don't want us to sit here and take up our time. But he is the, the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Yes, and so right. what he did, he did. And so when he lives in us and through us, we must do as he did because he's doing the doing through us. That sounds like a riddle. But I'm telling you, when we start getting into these things that only further divide us, I don't care if it's politics or race or religion or whatever, if you're just on the job and you're fighting over the stapler, ask your stop, stop before you engage. What yes. will this produce? And what is my ultimate goal? Am I being right or am I being righteous? Mm -hmm. Two different things. Yes, 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 yes. And I think especially for us as believers, we want to make these arguments uh, and we're just trying to be right so I can prove my point to you. That's so you right. can, because I know more than you. So am I, do I have a need to be right? Or should I be working towards righteousness? Mm -hmm. I really think that will dissolve a lot of the issues. It really will. It really will. Did you want to go over some of these? You um, said that you, you like that. One that yeah, you let's talk about the definition of a priest. And then we're going to tell you what it does not mean, okay? Mm -hmm. A priest, in effect, is a mediator who stands between God and man. Now, in the Old Testament, they had to have a priest to go make sacrifices on their behalf to reach God on their behalf. Uh, the Catholic Church still does that to, in, in, a, in a certain way. Um, 
But when Jesus died on that cross, if you remember, he said, it is finished, and that meant a lot of things. But the veil of the temple tore in two. Mm -hmm. And the reason it did was so that we know now, we, little old me, nobody from Rock Hill, South Carolina, Casey, South Carolina, can now enter into God's mm -hmm. presence without a man making sacrifice for me. The right. man's already made the sacrifice. His name is Jesus. It's a perfect sacrifice. So what does this whole priesthood think about? It is not about having someone to go before us. Uh, then Hebrews 5, 1 says, For every high priest being taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God that me, he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Jesus Christ made the ultimate sacrifice for sin. He is still our high priest. If you want to know what position Jesus is at this very moment, he is still acting on behalf of us as a high priest seated beside God in heaven. Okay? Uh, so we don't need a priest to go and do those things. But in our acting as a priest unto God through Jesus Christ, because he lives in me, the high priest lives in me, that makes me a priest. We can literally, our offering gifts and sacrifices for God for each other is called prayer. Mm -hmm. It's called prayer. Mm -hmm. It's called me going on behalf of uh, Alexis and her family and saying, God, you know, I want to make a sacrifice of my words, of my behavior, of my my relenting everything to you so that I might intercede on her behalf to bring what I know is going on in her house, sickness and these things. I am literally making a sacrifice of my time, my energy, my spiritual gifts on behalf of her family. I'm not in place of Jesus. I'm working alongside Jesus. <laughs> on his behalf. Does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so in here I have... Um, <laughs> A lot of scripture. Lots of scripture. Um, Hebrew. I'm not even going to make an excuse. I put a lot of scripture. But, do it. but in Hebrews 5, verses 1 through 14, and in, when you just read some of that, and in Hebrews 7, um, 1 through 7, it does talk about that he is the priest. It says, uh, you are my son. Today I have begotten you, was what God said to the son. Uh, and just as he also says in another passage, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, we're not going to get into Melchizedek. Please read the book, read the Bible. Um, but in the days of his flesh, offered up both prayers, which is what you're talking about. He offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he, and he was heard because of his piety, his humility. Although he was a son, he learned, oh, now this, listen. Oh, I listen, love this, listen. my favorite scripture. We got the big out cleaning symbols. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. He Go learned, on, talking about Jesus, Jesus learned obedience from the things he suffered. Ah. And having been made perfect, he became to all, or he became to all those who obey him, the source of eternal salvation being des, uh, designated by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Concerning him, we have much to say. I'm talking about Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And it is hard to explain since you have become, Okay, then it just goes on about dull hearing and whatever. But I wanted to focus on that because Christ, and this is actually just a little segue, it says that he was, he was a son and he learned obedience from the things he suffered. If I could just address that for one second. You can. Um... Because it's our show. <laughs> it's our show. We do what we please. <laughs> but, you know, part of being a king, part of being a priest, part of being the body of Christ, part of being the bride, all these other th these positions, is understanding suffering. That not all suffering, that we don't call in suffering. Oh, if I'm not suffering, then I'm not suffering for Jesus. That's not <laughs> what we are saying. No. Because he also brought us perfect healing. So, someone will say with, with their contradiction that we're going to suffer, but then... We, we also have perfect healing. What we need to understand, one, perfect healing is first internal. 
perfect healing because these these bodies he can raise are these bodies from the dead five thousand times while we are on this earth and we're still going back to dust. Yes. It, this body is still going back to dust. And when people get so caught up in what well, Jesus has it, and I had these conversations, and you had these conversations. Why did Why did God heal Jane, but God did not heal Bob? You know, why am I Bob still sitting here in cancer or wheelchair or arthritis or whatever? And why did so and so just rise up and pick up their bed and walk? Yeah, really. And so we get so fed up with suffering that we start to forget that God is God. We start to uh, wane and waffle a little bit in our faith yeah. that God may not be God. And so. If even Christ suffered, and again, I'm not saying go seek suffering. This is no. not what I'm saying. But I love Watchman Nee. He's another person that I've read a lot of his books, yes. and I love his walk. So Watchman Nee, N E E, get any of his books. You can't They're go all wrong. Good. Cannot go wrong. Um, but he's talking about how we, as the body of Christ, as priests, as kings, are so quick to get out of suffering that we miss the whole point of why. I mean, look, you went through COVID. You had not been sick in 13, 14, 5, I don't know, 50 years, something like that. <laughs> Sandy had not been had any years. illness in her body a very long time, and suddenly COVID came, hit her, and literally nearly took Knocked her out. Knocked me out. Nearly took you out, yes, right? I mean, yes. we had to pray her out of death. That's yes, a fact. Dear. Me and her other, I mean, people around the world are praying this for this gal right here. Um. And she was literally at death's door. Why? Well, I don't know all the answers to that. But the Lord allowed her 13 years of no sickness, not because she was faithful, but because God is good. And she was faithful, That's but it. because God is good. God is good. When you endured COVID, you know what? God was still good. He's still good. And so I love <laughs> that there is actually, again, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of not arguing? What is the purpose of walking in righteousness? What is the perfect? What is the purpose in doing what we do? What is the purpose in what you do? God there is, is purpose <laughs> actually in suffering. And it may not be physical ailment. It may be your children. It could be your spouse. It could be your job. It could be your finances. It could be anything. But we so, we are so quick to jump the gun and go, well, you know, God didn't fix this, that, or the other, so he must not be God. He must not be all loving. He must he not must be not all kind. Me. He must have missed If me. Jesus himself, the high priest, if he came in human flesh, he had to suffer in human flesh like we, so he won, so he could really relate to us, yes. so we could relate to him. But he suffered, and he learned, and he learned, and he learned. So this is just a word. If you are suffering in any capacity today, and you're wondering, where is God? This word, if, if this doesn't encourage you, I don't know. Yes. But it says Jesus, I really did derail here. That's but, okay, but, I won't talk about that. But the word is good, and we've got a few minutes, but... but if we could be, like Watchman Nee said, because Watchman Nee suffered a lot. He died in, in a Chinese prison for 20 years. Yes. I mean, he died ha having been there 20 years. But you know what he did? He served Christ where he was. Absolutely. He served Christ in his suffering. Yes. And so instead of being so anxious to get out of suffering, say, Lord, okay, because I'm here for whatever reason, help me Teach learn and grow to. and mature so that I can be more like Christ. Good. I asked oh, the Lord good. one time about this scripture because I was reading. He learned obedience from the things which he suffered. I read that over and over and I thought, no, wait a minute, now, because I like to kind of think things out. Wait a minute. Um, Jesus didn't learn obedience on the cross. We think when Jesus suffered, it was on the cross, which he did suffer on the cross greatly. Uh, but he didn't learn obedience then. Obedience is what got him on the cross. To the cross, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm saying, God, so what was he suffering before the cross that he learned obedience through? And the Lord said, when everybody thought loved him, ran from him. When all the powers that be on earth talked about him. They called him a demon. They called him a liar. They called him names. They rejected him. They abused him. They treated like he wasn't important. All the things that we suffer. Think about this. When someone's talking about you, what's your first response? When someone hurts you, what's your first response? When someone rejects you, What's your first response? What are those things that God wants to get out of you 
to teach you how to respond to them more perfectly so that you can be more like Him. And I promise you, you're hurt. You will be hurt because we have feelings. God's okay with that. Right. But He, gave he does feelings. not want us to live in that. So you, you might be hurt by someone, but it will not define you. It will not create you into ugliness. Nah. If every time somebody does something wrong and your first response is to cuss and scream at them, you might want to go back and say, obviously I'm not learning Jesus here. <laughs> so that's where Jesus learned obedience. He was obedient to God to act and respond in a godly and morally right way. That's what he learned. That led me to Zechariah 13.6. Uh, and one will say to him, What are these wounds between your arms? Mm -hmm. Then he will say, Those with which I was wounded in the house, house of, of my, my friends. friends. And Jesus was terribly wounded in the house of his friends. Yes. We have been terribly wounded in the house of our friends. But Jesus said he learned obedience through so, I mean, because really the deepest wounds are those we love the most. Absolutely. Forget fleshly wounds. Forget, because, you know, wound, physical wounds heal, but sometimes healing the heart, healing those soul wounds. But in your suffering, instead of turning from God saying, God, why did you let this happen? It's God, okay, why did you let this happen? What do I need to learn? And it's really the attitude of the heart. Absolutely. And Jesus' heart was always contrite. So Jesus, the priest, now lives in us and through that priesthood we can learn Absolutely. first how do we learn from our own suffering I don't, the, all of that just goes together it, it just, does it, they sound like different topics but they're all, all the, same. the same so just being able to say lord what is it you would have me learn instead of trying to get out so fast father i thank you that i'm coming out of this but in the meantime how well, might I, I grow I into obedience learn? yes in this, yes yes in this place so wow powerful yeah, got anything else? I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up because mm -hmm. our time is almost Yeah, gone. we're almost But out. she put a few points in here, and I'm, I'm just going to hit the highlight. Her number one point was, no one can appoint themselves a priest. Ding, ding, ding. It must <laughs> come from God alone. Mm -hmm. We're just not that good, folks. But that was it hard is. to believe. It's hard to believe, <laughs> but it is. We no longer, number two, we no longer need a priest to stand between us and God. Amen. Jesus the high priest comes, takes residence within the common man. We possess that, and so we don't need a human priest to stand in the way. So don't get off track thinking, well, we got to have a priest to intercede for us. No, you are a priest. Mm -hmm. Intercede for your fellow man, okay? Number three. Just as we are to rule as kings one with another, we also are to be as priests to minister one to another. That's what a priest does. Ministers on behalf of another. Pray for people, even the one, especially the ones that do you wrong. Keep talking. Okay. I'll be right back. God, allowing a word to be, let me go back up. A true priest from the kingdom of heaven ministers wisdom and righteousness from God. Allowing a word to be spoken from God through us to be an encouragement and bring correction. That's what a good priest does. Brings encouragement and proper correction with love and truth. Yes, and amen. And amen to that. <laughs> Alright, well our time is up, so I guess <clears throat> we're going to close out. Um, if you are just tuning in, you are listening to Two Girls in a Bible, uh, Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible. Who are we? Better two together, girls two in a Bible. Better together. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of fun together. Yes, we do. And we we air a lot of our goofy stuff. We had a cat walk on the table last week. Yeah. <laughs> and it's okay. Listen, this is real life. We live in a real life world. Yeah, what we're trying to teach, we're continuing to learn ourselves. We are continuing to... Um, we are continuing to... Somebody's at my door. See, yeah, again. Anyway. <laughs> real life, folks. But listen, we, we are in love with God, which means we are in love with the body of Christ. It doesn't yes. mean we like everything we see. It doesn't mean... But listen, I had to fall in love with mankind. That was yeah. a struggle for me because when you're hurt and hurt like Jesus being wounded in the house of his friends, I have been wounded in the house of my friends, and we all have. Absolutely. And learning to fall in love with the body of Christ. I mean, learning to fall in love with mankind, whether they're in the body or out of the body, right? Because... We want to draw those who are lost in. And so we do this because we just want to help. 
you know, yeah. um, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Um, we, we are both published authors. We are both ministers. I feel like we're a little willy-nilly today, but while you were speaking, I wanted to introduce these two books. Now, these two books are huge, but they're actually volumes. Put, you can buy them individually. So, Discovering the Person of Holy Spirit is, this is really my journey to discover who is Holy Spirit. And there are four volumes. So, again, if you, these are the cover pictures. Um, but you can buy them one, two, three, four separately right. if you like a smaller book. But this really is all about who is Holy Spirit because, honestly, Sandy, I did not know. Had a been lot in of church people have no whole, clue who he is. Right. And so, I want... Because if we can get this, you said this at the top of the show, when we are led by Holy Spirit, all that other junk falls to the ground. And so I do highly recommend, the Bible is always the best place to go, but if you're struggling, and we all need teachers, what's the Bible say? How are you going to learn without a teacher? That's and so right. this is what we do, we teach. And so I recommend discovering the person of Holy Spirit. I also have a book, <clears throat> and I always tell people, looking for God, um, and this is actually three volumes, but it's, it's pretty big. Um, but this is all about really, and you could be in the church a long time, and this still be for you. It doesn't. This is not, of course it's great for the unbeliever coming in, but this is really about looking for God. Who is he? Who is he? Listen, I had been in church saved at the age of six, and you've heard it before if you watched any of our shows. And but it wasn't until I was thirty-one that I fell on my face before God, and it's like God, who are you? Yes. And that's how this book was penned because it's like clearly the church did not teach me what I needed to know. And I'm not laying blame. Listen, it could have been that I wasn't listening. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a very strong possibility. But this book, Looking for God, if you just want some basic, this is my most basic, simple book that I have out there. Not that everything's so deep. I'm not trying to pretend that. But Looking for God is, is I highly recommend it. You know, we will say... Well, I know who God is. Mm. Until we read the scripture that says God is love. Okay. <laughs> we get lost in that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what love is. When you learn God, you will learn love. That is correct. That is correct. Well, listen, Sandy has some incredible books. Um, and I always... Can you please bring Finley next time so we can I remember will. to show Sorry. them to the people? I thought I'd give you some. But well, you do. I gave it to someone else. She had a kid. <laughs> so I sent them all the way to Rock Hill, of all places. Well, awesome. <laughs> all right. All right. So Sandy has her autobiography, Stories, A Woman's Journey of Becoming Imperfectly Perfect. Um, it is 112 short stories about her life. And honestly, Sandy, you know, I learned some stuff. And I've heard a lot of Sandy stories. And I hear her telling to other people. So... But there's stuff in here, I was like, mm. this book had me laughing and crying and sitting there with my mouth gaped open. Me too. Right? Because <laughs> when you write it, you're like, wait, that didn't really happen. But I'm telling you, and I always say this is a book of faith, but this is actually a, a book of maturing. Someone called me one day and said, Sandy, I just read your book stories. Did all that stuff actually happen? <laughs> and I said, yes. So I went back and I reread my own book and I thought, you know what? I've led an extraordinary life. Mm, mm. It seemed normal to me because God walked me through it. But I guess through someone else's eyes that say, really? And so when I went back, I thought, how much I have to be grateful Amen for. Amen to that. So definitely, if you want to be encouraged, inspired, if you want to laugh and cry a little bit, <laughs> Definitely get okay, stories. I'm not sure about that. A woman's <laughs> and, and listen, and, oh, and it will help. You, you will question some things. And I pray, and I know, Sandy, this is your goal, to lead you to the Bible to go, is that really a thing? Is that really, to that? Wait a minute. So this, this is just an incredible journey. I love this I started this book. to say a minute ago, if you question anything you hear on this program, yep. Go to the real word. We encourage search you. Search it out. If you need to call and ask us questions, do that. We want you to hear from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're just here to to bring some stuff, but he he's your director. All these books are great, yep. but they all came out of this. Correct. This is our favorite. This <laughs> favorite, is our favorite. favorite. We recommend this is the, the handbook. Bible. Uh, yeah, and so she has one law. This book is a is a book to the church, a word to the church. To the collective body of Christ. It's about how we got 
where do we start how do we get messed up and how do we get back on track yes um, but it, it is an incredible book and she discusses some things in the in the Old Testament that a lot of people don't even want to talk about I love this book please get this book um, I have an autobiography called Gaucho's God and Great Expectations like Sandy listen it's all about God it is all about my life I was telling somebody this morning it's like my life is so incredibly blessed through the ups and the downs and the downer downs and some more down downs. <laughs> <And more downs. laughs> there is no way I could not glorify our God. Amen. There's just no way. Amen. Um, so Sandy and your calls, book does that. Sandy calls it spice. You got anything to say? I mean, that pretty no, much covers that's it. Pretty much that's covers it. it. Um, if we are speaking out of under. What is it? Thy kingdom come. I don't know. I got so many books. <laughs> Thy kingdom come. Kingdom versus religion. We do, and we're not trying to push our books so we can make a sale. That is not our goal. If we're not going to get rich on these books. No. And listen, I, I mean, I'm not going to speak for Sandy, but if you need a copy and you can't afford it, please reach out to me. I will send you one. That is not a problem. If you truly cannot afford to buy yes. a ten or twenty dollar book, I will send you one. Does that apply to you too? Don't try to trick us, though, because we might. And the thing of it is, just kidding. yeah, we're kidding. And if you do trick us, that's okay because that's it's between okay. you and God, not you and you'll, God. You'll learn something in that book that will help you. <clears throat> you will. So, holiness or heresy? What is it? Holiness or heresy? The modern day church is a compliment to that kingdom come. This is also a word to the church. This is a collective body book. So definitely, there's some stuff in there. Um, and, and you can talk about Achilles' heel, and then that we're going to call it a wrap. A nation's. A Nation's Achilles Heel. This little book, it is small, quick read, but you'll get slowed down at times and say, oh, I never saw it that way. This is all about sexual sin. This is not to condemn, to point a finger, to bring shame. We never want to do that. We don't have never. a right. We've been That's there, done that, tactic. and got t-shirts mm -hmm. to show for it, honey. We want to help you avoid some of the pitfalls. Correct. But in every individual life that you see us collectively, we have to almost destroy our nation through yeah. sexual sin. And by nation, we mean whatever nation you're in. Whatever it's nation not just America. Because there's sexual sin in every nation. Every, if there's because people, we're just a perverted people without Jesus Christ to clean us. But this book will help you see what maybe your behavior is adding to the devastation of the place you live. The national deficit. It'll help you. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, so again, every Sunday morning at 8 a.m., we have a fresh new episode, and it's on YouTube, and it's on Facebook. If you've missed any episodes, please go back on our YouTube channel and watch any of them. Maybe you, can, you can pick and choose. Go out. Yeah. Hey, I, I want to listen to that topic. They stand alone. They do. They stand alone, even though we kind of do them in a series, but they each have their own information. So until next week, you guys be blessed, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and comment and share. Shalom. Peace.